Hello guys, uh, this is another video, is the third one in the series that I want to make um, and again this is my my um, my attempt to understand a little bit more what's going on in MetaHumans not just from a tool perspective and how to use it but actually how it's assembled and how it works. So in the, in the previous two videos uh, there is me trying to go through everything that happens in Unreal that is related to MetaHumans this time though i wanted to talk a little bit more about because last time we talked about pose assets and uh, pose driven pose through an rbf solver uh, I, I, basically what i want to do here is, is touch base a little bit more on on the maya side and the way i think this whole meta human poses has been has been made so um this is the source of asset that comes in uh, from from bridge you can you can e export download and export the source asset so this is the closest thing to represent the meta human deformation that you have in in unreal we have a one-to-one -one face mapping with with the controls i'm not going to go through there are so many better videos than this one to how to get this animation exported as an fbx animation curve data and applied it through um, uh, inside a reel as an FBX animation clip you can select the set members and export them and and then the same goes for the body joints you can export this as an animation clip um, as, a, as an FBX animation the way you would do normally and then you, you can get the animation back into a reel but this is not this is not really what was you know what I wanted to discuss the first, the, the thing I want to discuss is is the, the, the very cool way this thing has been assembled through the mm, when when you when you when you install the plugin, what really happens is that you get well you get a shelf that is this one, which I actually never used, um, but what you get is this plugin here, this oh, sorry these two plugins here. What these two plugins gives you are these nodes. Um, and these are basically a, it's the way that Unreal gives uh, allows Maya to provide uh, pose-driven deformation data through some through a solver that is called radial basis solver uh, or RBF. If you see written down RBF here and there, uh, that's that's what this is. And before before I jump into into some of the stuff I, I did here. I want to show you what this means. Um, if I if I raise this arm, if I were to use purely uh, at this moment, this body has a linear skin cluster. It's a standard skin cluster from Maya. And if I didn't do anything with any pose corrective, this arm by simply raising it around this area here it would collapse if we if we were only considering the rotation i just made area here would collapse and we all very aware of this problem um same goes here on the arm if i only were performing a rot a simple rotation this area would collapse why is not collapsing let's see if i can turn this off um bear with me Ignore what I've just done. I'm trying basically to. There we go. Yes, there it is. Uh, I'm going to explain exactly what I've done now. But uh, if I this at this very moment when I rotate this arm, you can see that there is a lot of loss in the volume. Okay. And the reason is we're simply performing a rotation on a linear skin cluster because the, the skin cluster in Maya is interpolated linearly. The vertices are traveling from one position to another without performing a cubic transformation on their own local coordinates of the vertices. So, and this is why a standard linear skin, skin cluster, which by the way is the same implementation in Unreal, because this is two, and nowadays is one of the fastest. So we're losing volume. So. There are many ways to fix this in a standard rigid workflow. You can you can say every time the arm goes from this position to this position, trigger a corrective blend shape. So literally the modeler has to model a blend shape to, so it looks good, and that blend shape uh, gets um, automatically applied when you rotate the arm. 
On a single swing axis like six is very simple. You can use many things, driven keys, remap values, anything. Now where this becomes complicated is on a ball joint with six degrees of freedom, where you cannot really identify an axis to trigger or make rules around. So two things are, are done really smart here. The first one, the let me undo everything. Uh, the first thing is that the, the correction, it's not done by using MOF targets. Why is that smart? It's because if I, I were going to go down the road of, of uh, pure plane shapes, then I will have to correct each individual uh, variant geometry for this object. Let's say you have a shirt and you model the bicep bulging. Then you have to model the, the bulging of the shirt. Then you have to model the, the bulging of whatever piece of armor. Instead, the correction is done through joints, meaning, and then I can apply the same joint skeleton to multiple meshes. So everything will, will, the, the correction I'm making, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, will propagate through all the meshes that is our skin cluster. So if I do it now, you can see that it's a much better deformation and this volume is preserved. Why is that? Well, you can see it. Every time I rotate this object, these joints are moving up and down and if I move this joint around let me break the connection for a minute here you can see that this joint is affecting only this area so there is a rule somewhere that is saying okay every time this thing happens move these joints there and move this joint here slide some joints around we're going to talk about where that, that rule comes from same goes here. You can see the, the, the surrounding joints moving around. And as I said, on a single axis, it's very simple to trigger the rule. But on a rotation, rotating thing, it's a much, much harder. And you can see the same thing is happening here. See how nicely the volume is preserved there? It would, this thing would collapse if if I were to put this to zero. This is the standard Maya behavior, and is the classic problem you see around the fingers, etc. So how is this thing done? This thing is done through the RBF solver that comes with the plugin. And I wrote a, 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 a script here. You can see that if I if I unhide the the type objects only thing. These are all the nodes that are basically part of the plugin, not really the blender. I'm looking for the RBF. It's somewhere. It doesn't matter now, but I, I will I will show you. So what I've done in order to introspect what's go what was going on here is that I wrote a simple a simple script that introspect what, what is in there and it, it prints me mm, data. Or statistics so we have we have a no uh, this is the node that does all everything and it's everything related to the calf and then it prints out if I select this node here you can see that it has these attributes and what I'm printing here and this again it was just me in order to study what I'm printing here is is the uh, the attributes that are being set here and at the very end is telling me which attributes are common to all the nodes. There are 14 nodes that are performing uh, corrections all the way around around the body. Let's see if we can count them. There's probably one for the shoulder, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, the hands, eleven, twelve, probably for the feet, and probably there are a couple couple around here for the clavicles. I know I, this is just a guess. I'm, I'm, and but you can see the names here. There's hand, hand, foot, foot, clavicle, clavicle. Yeah, calf, which is uh, was what I was referring with, with the knee, upper arm, low and and lower arm. Yeah. So that's that's what it is. So these nodes are, it, basically, what is allowing this correction to happen on a multi-axis, not just on a single axis. And how do we store these poses? And how do we? And this is basically is, is one is the main reason why the deformation of metahumans looks so good. Ooh, not not what I wanted. 
still. Not that. Did I just disable? Yeah. So this is why the deformation on metahumans, it's really, really good. Because it gets corrected all the time. Now, by digging around, I found the script that I think is being used by Epic Games in order to store these poses. And this script is, I'm running it through here. This is not something I've made. This is something they made available publicly. And this script, it's something that allows you First of all, it, it gives you all the RBF solder node type in the scene and allows you to edit them. And you can see that in the lower arm, and uh, let me try and go, let's see if I can set this to bind pose. Yeah, no, I didn't like that. Oh my goodness, let's jump onto here. I'm sorry about that. There is some undo operation that I, I somehow broke. So, if I go into the lower arm R, you can see that there are different poses here. And by clicking here, you can move them around and see. So basically, each one of this pose has been corrected. And there is an extension, there is a flexion, and these probably are the degrees of the values. You can see that rotate Z minus 10 is, nine, is 10, 110 is 110, so these are really nicely named. And basically what this is saying is that when this value is a 75, just move this joint, these other joints. Which joints? The, dr the driven joints. These are called driven transform. It doesn't have to be joints. These are just transform moving in space. But in this case, we need joints because those joints are stick into the mesh. Okay, so basically, if we go through all these poses and move these things around and store this as a pose, what you get is a very, very, really nice, good deformation rig. And the cool thing about this is that, um, let's see if I can reload this rig. I'm sorry, it's bothering me a lot. <clears throat> so what once once you go through the setup in Maya, and you can do this on your own by leveraging this plugin, even, even with the custom character. Um, once you go through these, this, pro this, this process in, in Maya, then there is this really cool function here that says make poses to timeline. And this what gives you, it goes through all the poses, it stores a keyframe per pose, and then you can export that as, a, as an FBX. And that becomes your animation that I, saw, I, I showed in the previous video, that then, and through that animation you can generate a pose asset. That's how I think it works. Again guys, I'm stu still learning. This is me trying to guess based on my own personal experience, nothing nothing else than that. So uh, this is really smart because, again, it, 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 you, you are allowed to author poses in, in a DCC package such as Maya, and, and then you can export those poses through the bake poses to timeline using the FBX um, file format to import as an animation clip. And from that animation clip, once it's in Unreal, you can, with one click you can generate the pose asset. That pose asset, it, it, then you can apply it as a post-process mm, animation blueprint, the way I explained in the previous video. Video number two, I believe. So how does this thing work? Now I'm gonna try to use it. Keep in mind that I couldn't find any documentation on how to use it. I, and what I did is basically just guessing. So um, let's see if I make a new, a new scene. Let's see if I can make this work. Now I'm going to quickly create some, some skeleton. Uh, let me take this one and get rid of that one. So here I'm trying to recreate a, a, a setup that make, might make sense. So, okay, so here imagine that this is my bicep flexing like that. I'm going to click refresh here because this is listing all the RBF solver nodes. So I. The way I learned this is by basically trying to understand and looking through the code of what this was trying to do. Um, it says select driven joints, then the driver for the joint to create the driver. Well, I want to create, I want to drive these two joints based on this driver. And then I said create driver. That's the only button that I found. And this is like demo. So what happened here is that it create an RBF solver and it create automatically the base pose and it says, okay, the joint four and five are the driven transform. Um, 
and automatically create base pose because the solver requires a base pose to, to interpolate from so you can compute the delta so then my understanding is if you're finishing editing this is done this is over and if you were to add a pose now it wouldn't work so I think this is how it works you need to in order to edit or add poses you need to edit the RBF solver and the reason why this is necessary is because if I try to move these joints around, these joints are locked. And so I don't, I cannot reposition them to make them look good in the position I want. So I click here and then they get disconnected so I can pose them, I, I think. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to move this thing here and say whenever this uh, uh, arm is there, I want these two objects to be in a really weird position. And then I'm going to add the pose. And this pose is like flexing, flexing 45. Let's say. So now I should be able to jump between this pose and this pose. Now, why is this not working though? And this is one of the reasons why I wrote the stat rig, the stat script. So it doesn't look like it's understanding that this is it's meant to be moved. Now, one thing I found is that the RBF solver, well, not I found, but uh, this kind of I knew, but the RBF solver needs to know a radius to, to, to know the area of influence on which this pose needs to be driven. So, and this is where, like, I wrote the stats to quickly introspect, let's see if I still have them, to quickly introspect roughly the values that each area had. So you can see that most of them are a radius of about 50, and a, a well, not all of them. This, of course, needs to be tweaked depending on your characters, but at least this makes sense. So for the, let's say, for the lower arm, which I believe being the, the closest example, for the lower arm here, I have a radius of 50, and again, this is not the right way to do it. You should tweak it with a skin mesh, but I, I didn't want to skin a mesh to this thing. Uh, the other thing that, that um, I found when I was investigating is... Where is it? I lost it. Let me copy this so it doesn't, it doesn't go away. Um, another thing I found is that, yeah, the mode type is interpolative. Automatic radius, radius to false. The weight threshold, uh, it, it was a, no, a none, so I guess this is a zero. The distance method, and this makes perfect sense to me, needs to be a swing, a swing angle, which is a single axis. Um, normalized method, which I believe it's the, the value of the output pose, it's normalized between 0 and 1 which, because we don't want to over crank it and the reason why probably we don't want to do that is because we don't want poses to clash. The function type, and this is I bet is just purely interpolation type, it's 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 a Gaussian. The twist axis is x and the input mode is rotation. Now let's see, and you can see that now this works. Now. It feels weird, and it probably feels weird because it's either getting triggered too soon, or too, or uh, too late. And how do you define that? Is by modifying the the radius. This is this is pretty much what is going on through the entire body. Once you have that, you can you can generate the bait post timeline and then export them into Unreal. As, as I said, as, a, as an animation clip first and then as, an, as a pose asset. So then you can trigger them either in your skeletal mesh post process animation blueprint and they will be picked up automatically by your mockup, input raw data, animation or control rig. I hope this makes sense. Bye.